All right, God bless everyone this morning. This Sunday morning is a beautiful day out there. Thank God for that. Praise the Lord. I just want to um, read with you Luke chapter 18, 1 to 8. It's the story of the persistent widow. I know some of you that have been listening to some of the videos that both uh, myself and my sister Robin Codero have, have um, teachings and preachings on. I'm sure you heard, some of you may have heard me preach on the story of the pers persistent widow. This is like one of my favorite stories in the Bible, parables, that Jesus shared. Praise the Lord. She was persistent, but in the right way. When we're persistent or determined, we have to do it according to God's ways and his ways of doing things. He said in Matthew, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Okay, so when we seek the kingdom of God, we got we got to seek it with his righteousness. We can't do it apart from righteousness because there's a lot of people call themselves, they say, I'm serving God, but they want to do it their way. And we cannot serve God our way. We have to serve God his way. He have a way of doing things that are right, whether we understand it or not. So we have to learn the ways of God. And we learn those ways by getting into the word of God, praying in the spirit and being led by the Holy Spirit each and every day. So God have a right way of doing things. He says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. His righteousness meaning his ways of doing things. His right ways of doing things. His right standing. What God calls right. It's not what man calls right. Because man can call a lot of things right, but it's wrong before God. So we got to make sure that we're standing right according to God's ways, according to God's thoughts, according to what, 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 what God calls right. Because we cannot, because in, in the end, when we stand before God, it's not going to be he she, he said this, she said that, or he, it's not going to be that. It's going to be what, what we, we, we have to stand according to what God calls right. Amen. So we just want to be right with that. And we can, if we get into the word of God, he said, with all you're getting in Proverbs, it says, with all you're getting, get understanding. Because there's a lot of people who want to teach and preach the word, but they don't have no understanding of what they're preaching about. They, they don't understand the word because they don't spend time with God to, to learn of him, to learn of his ways, to, to learn of his thoughts. He said his thoughts and his ways are higher than our, our thoughts and our ways. It says that in Isaiah. I'm just basically um, paraphrasing what the verse said, but I'm going to find it and read it. Praise the Lord. His ways are higher than our ways. So God have a higher way of doing things, and we have to understand that way. And we have to spend time with the Lord. So I'm going to read Luke chapter 18, verse 1 to 8. And it's going to be about the persistent woman. Um, this woman, she was determined. She, she had something that was done to her. It was an injustice that was done to her. We don't know exactly what the situation was, but it was something where she needed justice. So she went to this judge, and he was not even, he didn't fear God, he didn't even fear man. He had no fear. He just didn't, he, he didn't know who God was. Because had he known who God was, he would have had a fear and honor of God. But this man, who was a judge, he had no fear of God. So he didn't even know God. He didn't even know who God was. He may have heard of God, but he didn't believe. So he had no fear of God. He, he, he had no fear of man. So he basically made his own decisions, did what he wanted to do, what he called, I guess, basically what he called right. But you know what? And it, it, but, but we're going to read what happened as this woman was persistent. She was determined in what she knew was right before God. And she continued to go before this man who was not, this judge, he was not a, a um, no doubt he was not a believer because he didn't fear God and he didn't fear man. So we're going to see what happened as this woman continued to be persistent in what was right before God. See, a lot of people can be persistent in a lot of things, determined in a lot of things, and it's not even right before God. But let us be persistent in what is right before God. Because when we're persistent and determined to do what is right before God, in the end, it will stand. But if we're persistent and determined to do something that is wrong, in the end, it will fall. And I'll tell you this, if it's of God, it's going to stand. And if it's not of God, it will fall. So let's see what happens here. Luke chapter 18, verse 1 to 8, the parable on prayer. Now, Jesus was telling the disciples a parable to make the point. I'm reading from the Amplified Bible to make the point that at all times they ought to pray and not give up and lose heart saying in a certain city there was a judge who did not fear God and had no respect for man there was a desperate widow in that city and she kept coming to him and saying give me justice 
and legal protection from my adversary. For a time, he would not. But later he said to, to himself, Even though I do not fear God, nor respect man, yet because this widow continues to bother me, I will give her justice and legal protection. Otherwise, by continually coming, she will be an intolerable annoyance, and she will wear me out. So we see right here in verse 5 that he got so tired of coming, her coming, because she was persistent. And you know, for her to be persistent, she had to have God on her side. Because when we do things in our own strength, there's things that can come against us that in our own strength we will fall eventually. But when we come in the strength of, of Jesus, it says, I can do all things to Christ Jesus who strengthens me. When you come in the strength of Jesus, he gives you the, the strength and ability to stand strong. He gives you the strength and ability to do what needs to be done. He gives you the strength and ability to say what needs to be said. He gives you the strength and ability to, to, to just do what, what, what he has called you to do. And we got to know who God is. We got to know what God has called us to do because if we don't know, we, we can fall. But when we know who God is and we know that God had put a desire in our heart to move forward in a certain direction, can nothing stop us as long as we keep our eyes stayed on Jesus. There's a song that I wrote years ago, keep your eyes on Jesus. And you got to keep your eyes on Jesus because if you don't keep your eyes on Jesus, we could fall and we don't want to fall. So we got to know that our strength comes through the Lord. It says, not by power, is not by strength, but it's by my spirit, says the Lord. It is by the spirit of God that we can do the things we do. Je uh, Jesus said in John that the he sent the comforter who is the Holy Spirit. He comforts, he leads us, he strengthens us. So if you look for the Holy Spirit to strengthen you, lead you, and guide you, he will. And, 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 and this is a reality reality to a true follower of Jesus Christ. When we really know who we are, that we're imitators of God, that we're children of God, we can stand because it's not in our own strength, but it's in Jesus Christ. It's not in what we can do, but it's through Jesus Christ. He says, Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. And if you want life, you want strength, you want the ability to do what needs to be done, it is through Jesus Christ. So when we understand that, we, we, we can move forward. So I'm going to read verse um, 6. I'm going to start with 5 again. Uh, uh, Luke chapter 18, I'm going to start at verse 5 again. Yet because this widow continued to bother me, I will give her justice and legal protection. Otherwise, by continually coming, she will be an intolerable annoyance, She and she will wear me out. This is what this unjust judge, judge said. He was so tired of this woman coming, he said she's going to wear me out. So I'm going to give her justice. I'm going to give her the protection that she's asking for. See, this woman continued to come because she knew she was right standing with God. She knew God was with her. When you know God is with you, you can stand. You can keep moving forward no matter what. No, more, no matter what negative things are said against you. You said no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Any tongue that rises up against you in judgment shall be condemned. You can stand. You can move forward and everything. Use the word against any negative thoughts any negative words that are said against you because people have to realize that when they're coming against a child of God, a follower of Jesus Christ, they're not coming against them. They're coming against God. When God have called you to do something, can nobody stop you as long as you keep your eyes stayed on Jesus? Because they got to realize it's not against you. They may not like you as a person, as an ind individual, but they're coming against God. If you, if you are a true follower, follower of Jesus Christ, if you are a child of God, they're coming against God. And when they come against God, it's God who they have to deal with. He said, be still and know that I am God. So we have to be still children of God and know that God is God. He fights our battles. And we got to trust him. And we got to be led by the Holy Spirit. So this woman continued to come. It was hostile. She knew this judge didn't want her to come anymore. She, she knew the first time she went to him. The second time she went to him. The third time she went to him. The fourth time he would not give her what she wanted. But she was determined because she knew God was with her. She was determined because she, she knew she was right in asking for justice against her adversaries. So we got to know God for ourselves no matter what. We got to stand and use the word of God. Amen. So, you know, and, and, and when we have adversaries and people who are against us, who, who, who say they know God, but they don't know God because they because if they knew God, they, they wouldn't do some of the things or said some of the things they said, you know, and people don't realize it's God they have to answer to. 
They may not ever come to you or me and apologize for what they have done. It doesn't matter. The main thing, they better make sure they, they're right with God. Because they got to know when you're coming against a child of God, you're coming against God. You're not coming against that person or that male or a female you think you don't like for whatever reason. You're coming against God. So people of God, don't take it personally. Pray for those people. That they that God open their spiritual eyes and ears that they hear him and turn away from those ways so they make it end. Because if you want to walk, we want to walk in, in, in the promises of God. We must, we must all seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And he said, and all these things shall be added unto us. If you want to see the power of God in our life, we must seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto us. And we have to walk in the love of God. God is love. Anything apart from love is not of God. I don't care how much you say you know God. I don't care how much you say you pray before the Lord. I don't care how much you say you read your Bible. I don't care how many times you go to church in a week or a year. If you're not walking in the love of God, you're missing it. And we, we don't want to miss it. We don't want to miss it. I'm going to read to you Isaiah chapter 1 before I continue. Where these people were not doing right before God. God, these were the Israelites. And let's, and let's see what these people were trying to do. They, they were trying to pray to God, thinking that God going to hear their prayer. But God, God is a righteous God, and we got to come to him right. It says, uh, verse Isaiah chapter 1, verse 15. So when they spread out their hands in prayer, pleading for my help, I hid my eyes from you. Yes, even though you offered many prayers, so they might come to God with many prayers, I will not be listening. Your hands are full of blood. We can't come to God any kind of way. We got to come to him with a pure heart. We got to come to him in a righteous manner. When we know we're doing something wrong, we need to repent. Repent means to turn away from that way and don't go that way anymore. We, we need to do it God's way. So many people are trying to serve God their way, but we can't get into heaven our way. We got to come through Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. And we, got, we have to come through Jesus Christ. So I'm going to read. Uh, I'm going to continue reading here. Uh, verse 6. Then the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says. Listen to what he said. And what did he say? He said, because this woman kept bothering him, kept coming. She's going to wear me out. So I'm going to give her justice. I'm going to protect this woman. I'm going to do what she asked me to do. And the only reason this woman could continue, she was coming under hostile situation. No doubt this judge probably was looking at her in a way where she would be afraid to speak to him. No doubt he may have said things to her where she felt uncomfortable, but she knew she was right before God. She knew God was with her, so she continued to come. And that's what gave her the strength to continue until she got justice. And because of her persistence, she got the justice that she, that she was seeking. So I'm going to read right here, verse 6. Then the Lord said, listen to what this unjust judge says. And will not our just, our God, defend and avenge his elect, his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night. So he's saying, if this judge who didn't fear God, who did not fear man, gave her justice, what do you think? God, who loves his children, and we're coming before him with a righteous heart. We're coming to him with a pure heart, crying out to him day and night about a situation. How much do you think our God in heaven will not give us justice? He will give his children justice. God loves us and he defends us and he defends his children. Amen. It's a God. And I'm going to read it again. Then the Lord said, listen to what this unjust just judge says. And will not our just God defend and avenge his elect, his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night? Will he, will he delay in providing justice on their behalf. So he's asking, will, will he delay it? He's not even going to delay it. This, this judge who was unjust, he delayed it and delayed it, but she kept coming and kept coming because she had God with her. But when we come before God, God will quickly, he will suddenly give us the justice that we need. Amen? He will give us the salvation that we seek. He will give us the deliverance that we seek. He says right here, he's, he's not, he's not going to delay it. It says, verse 8, I tell you, that he will defend and avenge them quickly. So God will defend and he will avenge his children quickly, suddenly, quickly. God is powerful and he sees and knows everything. I'm going to read to you Zechariah 4, where it talks about where God's eyes go throughout the earth. I'm going to read the very last part right here. It says on verse uh, Zechariah chapter 4, uh, verse 8, then... And it was talking about the seven, the lamp, the the um, the uh, the lamps. And this was a um, a vision that was given to um, I believe it was 
um, it, it, this talks about a vision. It talks about the golden lampstand and the olive trees. But I'm going to read the very last verse where it says, They are the eyes, what, what he was talking about. Well, let's, let's read verse 10. Who with reason despise... Who with reason despises a day of small beginnings? For these seven eyes shall rejoice when they see the plumb line in the hand of Zerubbabel. They are the eyes of the Lord which roam throughout the earth. So God sees and he sees everything. We can't hide nothing. His eyes are going throughout the whole earth. And there's other verses that also says that God sees and knows everything. So we can't hide nothing. So we, we, we you know... If we're doing something that is not righteous before God, we just need to come and repent. That means turn away from that thing. Don't do it again. Turn away and be sincere with the Lord. Come with a pure heart and he will forgive you. He's a, he's a merciful God. So we just got to come to God the way he, he, he have things set. Praise God. Because God have a way, way of doing things. We may not understand it, but God's ways are always right. Praise the Lord. So I'm going to read the last part of, um, I'm going to start at 6. Then the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says and will not our just God defend and avenge his elect his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night will he will he delay in providing justice on their behalf I tell you that he will defend and avenge them quickly so God will avenge us and he will defend us quickly he will defend and avenge his children quickly however when the son of man comes will he find this kind of persistence faith on the earth so God wants us to stand. When you've done all you can do, stand. 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 When you know God is on your side, stand. Because you already won through Jesus Christ. It's not in your strength. It's not what you say. It's not who you think you are. It is through Jesus Christ. We can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthened us. We have the power to do what we can do. It's only through Jesus Christ. So we thank the Lord for his power. We thank the Lord for hearing our cries day and night. We thank the Lord for avenging us according to his will. Not according to our will. According to God's will. And God put his desires in our heart. And we thank you, Lord, for putting your desires in our heart to move forward and to stand. Lord, stand according to what you call right today in Jesus' name. So I'm going to pray the prayer of salvation for those who want Jesus in their life. For those who need forgiveness of their sins. So let's pray together. Our Father which art in heaven, we believe that you sent your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who came to the earth, who died, and who rose again, that we may have salvation through Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Lord, we ask you for Jesus to come into our life, to change us, to give us that new life. Lord Jesus, I thank you that you are my salvation. I ask you to forgive me all of my sins, and I thank you for saving me today. In Jesus' name. And Lord, I thank you for the Holy Spirit. I ask you for the Holy Spirit. And I thank you for the Holy Spirit to lead me, to guide me, to comfort me, to strengthen me, to teach me your ways, Father. And Lord, that my thoughts would be full of your word, Lord God. Uh, Romans chapter 12, it says, Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. And Lord, I thank you as I read your word, that your word will renew my mind and transform me, Father. And thank you for my new life today. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless everyone and have a wonderful Sunday today.